Uh, always pleased to have Dr. Patrick Tang joining us on the news, our Division Chief of Pathology Sciences at Sidra Medicine here in Doha. Nice to see you, Doctor. Um, it seems to me that there, what we've just played there, it's a two-level thing. There's what people can do themselves and then there is official treatments, if I can call that. So if there's no official treatment, uh, what do we do about that? Is there anything on the horizon that you, that you hear about in medical circles? Definitely there's no specific treatment for coronavirus uh, right now. Um, people are working on many randomized control trials in many of the regions that are heavily affected by uh, COVID-19, such as in China. Uh, some of the early results have shown uh, that some of the drug combinations have not worked uh, when they've tried it on many people. So it's very important that we trust these messages that are coming from the WHO and other reputable medical authorities that there are no specific treatments for COVID-19 as of yet. Um, and, and as well as treatments, we're also waiting for vaccines and, and those could be one year down the road as well too. And is this what happened in the past with you know, SARS and MERS, I sort of, I use those as, as a bit of a yardstick sometimes, where a new strain comes along and then there's this scramble to find something that works. Certainly there, there are therapies that work. So giving people oxygen and supporting them uh, while they recover from the virus uh, with their own immune system is something that uh, we, we do right now. Um, same thing was applied during SARS and MERS. Uh, but at the same time, we are also trying to find specific drugs that might also help those that are severely uh, ill. So definitely during this uh, crisis, we are trying experimental therapies, but these need to be done in a very controlled manner uh, in, in places that have designed very well controlled trials to be able to show whether the drug actually works or, or that it might even cause harm for the patient. Mm. OK, so that's working on a level of what... Uh what doctors are trying to create. There are also governments around the world, you know, issuing tips on how people uh, can try to prevent spreading or catching the disease. So these are the things we can do ourselves. I think we've got the CDC website here just for our viewers, you know, talking about how it spreads, the, the steps you take to protect yourself. Um, and that's sort of what I want to get into you with you now, what people can do in their everyday life. We know about the washing hands uh, and we know about the social distancing, but I also start to see things about, well, if you do leave the house and you come back home, uh, what about your clothes? What about your wallet that you use to pay for your grocery uh, or your handbag or, or anything like that? Are these all sort of risk areas which we need to think about when we re-enter our house? Certainly, um, everything that contacts the external environment is a potential source of infection, uh, but we have to look at everything uh, in relative terms and, and take everything uh, in perspective. So, so the things that you mentioned are very important. So social distancing, washing your hands, and uh, also the other thing we can add is cleaning high-touch surfaces. So uh, you had mentioned things like your wallet, uh, maybe your, your jacket and other things like that. So what, what do you do when you actually come home, right? So the most important thing is, is to wash your hands. If your hands have contacted uh, high-touch surfaces outside that might be contaminated uh, or, or touched by other people, then it's important that you wash your hands. Uh, the, the things that you bring in with you, uh, I mean, there's different uh, recommendations from different governments. Some people say that you should clean all your packages and other things like mm. that. But most of us don't, uh, you know, don't lick our packages or do other things like that. So I think it's very important that you have packages or bags or other things like that. You take your items out of there uh, and you, you may want to throw away the packaging mm. that might can potentially contaminate. It's actually very difficult to yeah. clean boxes or plastic bags or other things like that. So, so, so get rid uh, of them transferring things yeah. out into cleaner packages is a very important thing. And then wash your hands after. Yeah. So go always go back to the basics of washing your hands. Dr. Tang, one more thing I want to ask you about, and this is about masks. Now, you won't be able to see, but I've on air, I'm putting my mask on now which is pretty heavy duty. I don't know if you can still hear me, actually. It's a, it's a big fabric mask and it's got replaceable filters inside, N99 filters, I believe they're called. Um, it makes me feel better when I go out if I'm wearing this, but what is the, or is there a definitive word on whether this is actually helping me or not? Well, we all know that masks are much more useful when they're used on people that are sick or used by people who are taking care of people that are ill. 
So um, the, the effectiveness of a mask on, on a regular person that's just going outside is, is not very high. Um, there, there's many risks and caveats to using a mask. So one would be that you might have a false sense of security uh, of the mask. When you're using the mask, you might do high risk behaviors that you wouldn't normally do. You might be adjusting the mask all the time because it's not comfortable. And then you end up touching your face with your contaminated hands. Um, and, and the other thing is when you people, regular people start buying all these medical supplies, it makes it more scarce for the people who really mm. need it, the healthcare workers uh, around the world. Dr. Patrick Tang, always a pleasure. Thank you for all your advice. We do appreciate it.